What I want you to understand is what's going on here in the numbers, I want you to understand it visually, okay? So when you do this, this dual thing every year, you put in money and then interest gets calculated. You put in money, interest gets calculated, right? This is what is taking place, okay? Each of those green points is a different amount of money at a different amount of time. So I've got time on the horizontal axis here and the value of the account on the vertical axis, right? Now, it's a bit easier to see if I actually sort of join up the lines. I want you to look carefully. Let me zoom in for a section here, right? All right, that'll do, okay? What is going on here? Why does the model look like this? Can anyone suggest to me, in the first instance, what do those vertical lines signify? Any suggestions? This is the? This is the deposit, right? Um, hopefully, maybe I zoom in a little bit more. Oh, too far. Anyway, you get the idea, right? You can see there on the left-hand side, look at the, the scale, right? It's $100. That's how much you're putting in every time, right? And what that means is, as I zoom out, if I can be good enough with my trackpad, as I zoom out, you can see that vertical line is always the same length. Yeah, I need to go a bit further. There we go. Because the deposit is the same size every time. Does that make sense? OK, so this is the next question. Not vertical lines. What are these? What are these slanty lines? What's that about? This is the interest calculation, right? So each time it grows a little bit. At the beginning, it's growing barely at all, right? But towards the end of the account, you can see it's quite steep, right? The interest calculation really takes over. Why is that? Ben. Awesome. Yes. There's enough actual money in the account. We saw it in the spreadsheet right here. You know, by year number six, you got 800 bucks in there. When you do 10% of that, that's $84. So that's almost as much as your deposit. And of course, eventually it overtakes your deposit, right? So that's the idea. Now, what did we say future value was? It was this thing over here, right? That total amount. Now, it's worth just pointing out there is a slight difference between this number and the number that we got on this spreadsheet. You can see them both there. What is the difference? What's going on here? It's an easy number. There's, there's one final deposit that's missing. Now, you might be asking me, Mr. Wu, why did you put this extra deposit on? I'm about to show you why in a second. But you will often have to read carefully on the question when they ask you, what's the final amount? What does final mean? Like at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year, read the words really carefully because they will decide whether you have that red value or, or this value over here. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you why uh, we've got this particular thing here. What you've just been looking at, you might see it on the left-hand side, is what we call a discrete model. So there's separate points in time where the money is calculated, OK? But once you just have a look at this formula that I have in the, on the left-hand side, have a look at that. Actually, see if I can make it a bit bigger for you. No, I've already made it bigger. OK. Do you recognize that formula? 100 times 1.1 to the x minus 1 divided by 1.1 minus 1. What is that formula? Do you recognize it? Samuel, you tell us? Sum of a geometric series. This is the sum of a geometric series, right? But the thing you'll notice is because I'm on, an, I'm on a like, coordinate plane here, OK? So the values of x that you can put in, just like when we had a look here, they could be anything you like. They don't have to be whole numbers, OK? So when I'm about to show this I'm going to enable this graph, right? This is not going to look like the discrete model with the steps on it that you saw before. Forget about geometric series for a second. Just have a look at the formula. Look at the, the function, right? What kind of function is that? It's not a trig function. It's not a polynomial. What kind of function is it? Say it louder, Otava. It's exponential, right? The x is in the index, right? So now you, you know what an exponential looks like. When I hit go, you should ex know what shape to expect, right? There it is. Let me get the discrete model out of the way so you can see it a little more clearly, right? If it were that we could look at the banking out at any minute point in time, this is what it would look like, right? In fact, we can't do that. The bank only pays us at you know, regular intervals. We only put deposits in at regular intervals. But this is not a discrete model. Does anyone know what it's called? Think back to stats. It starts with a C. This is continuous, right? So this x graph, these are the real numbers here. So if you put them in, this is what you get, OK? Now, future value. Let's go back here. Future value is what's happening at the end here. But there's something really important you need to know. It's, it's exciting looking at that number, right? You're like, whoa, I'm going to have more than $1,000, right? But in eight years' time, that $1,257, 
you shouldn't be as impressed by that as the initial number looks, right? The reason you shouldn't be impressed is because, who studies economics here? Hands up. A few of you. Okay, thank you, Anzan. Even if you study just commerce in year 9 and 10, there's this nasty thing. It's actually not nasty. It's probably good in many ways. There's this thing that the economy does over time that means in the future, your money's not worth as much as it is now. What's that thing called? Starts with an I? Inflation, right? So your dollars in the future, they inflate in value, right? So future value impri implies this thing that's it's equivalent in the present, right? That $1,257, that's not money I have now, it's money I have after like eight years, right? So what is that worth today, okay? What you kind of have to do is use that interest rate, right? Interest rate is usually a good reflection of inflation, usually, because that's kind of the point, right? If it were a lot more or a lot less, you wouldn't go for it, right? So what you need to do is look at that future value and go backwards in time. Imagine that you took that interest rate, which for us is you know, an unnecessarily simple number, 10%, and go backwards in time to what that amount will be. Okay? If you do that, in this case, you get $575, roughly. Right? This is me winding back that 10% interest. Uh, if you want me to prove it, this is how it looks. Right? It's a little bit like, here's another way to think about it. What amount do I have to put in the bank today and not touch it so that eventually, on the same interest rate, it gets that future value, okay? That's what present value means. What is that investment worth to me, but actually today, all right? Okay, now you need to think hard for a minute. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause and let you do some work here, and you're gonna be not sure, because I'm not showing you how to do this, right? How could you use a spreadsheet like this, and that goal-seeking thing that I showed you before, to work out what present value is. What do I have to deposit right at the start, sorry, right there, so that instead of over and over again putting in that money, it still ends up at that future value, but without having to put in lots and lots of deposits repeatedly, right? I'll say it one more time and then I'm gonna set you to work. What would I have to do to this spreadsheet to change it, um, here's a clue for you, by the way. If you go down the bottom here and right click on where it says like your, it probably just says sheet one. I, I called it a model because that's what it is. If you uh, move or copy, you can duplicate this sheet so you don't delete all your stuff, all the work you've just done over the last little bit. And then you can fiddle with it to your heart's content, right? How might you change this spreadsheet so that instead of calculating future value, it will calculate present value, okay? I'm gonna let you see if you can work it out. I'll give you a bit of time and if you are really struggling, call me over. Off you go.